All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the straight line method for amortization of the bond premium. So we've got a bond premium that we gotta deal with. It's gonna reduce our interest expense for the life of the bond. And we're gonna do that using the straight line method. So we have two methods. We're gonna be using the straight line method in this lesson. And then in a few lessons, we'll use the effective interest method. So let's get started with helping you understand the straight line method for how do we amortize interest using uh, for a bond that's issued at a premium. It is a mouthful, but let's get going here. So kind of an overview here. Now this method takes the bond premium and allocates it evenly each and every period. That's why it's called the straight line, just like straight line depreciation. Now we only use this method in situations where the results are not materially different from the effective interest method. This is usually true for short term bonds. So if it's a short term bond, we can use the straight line. It's just more effective and efficient. And the difference is very immaterial, so very small, that we can get away with doing this. Now, just a review of what we're doing here. So let's assume, for instance, that we issue a bond at 105,450, and then the face value is $100,000. Our job is going to allocate this difference in between its face value and its carrying value, the 5,000 for 50 um, over the life of the bond payable so that we can get the carrying and the face value to $100,000. So we're gonna take this here and amortize it. So we're gonna spread it over the useful life of the bond. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, at the end of the day, what's gonna happen is that the interest paid is gonna be more. It's gonna be based on the bond. So whatever the bond's face value times its um, stated interest rate, we're gonna take those two. That's gonna give us our interest paid, but then we're gonna reduce the interest expense by the that amortization of the interest that we're going to do of that premium okay so that's what we're going to have to calculate here using the straight line method so some of the mechanics just understanding the high level mechanics of what we're going to be doing we are going to take the discount or sorry, the premium, and divide it by the number of periods in which the interest expense is calculated let me fix that so we are gonna take the premium and divide it by the number of periods in which that interest expense is calculated, typically on a per month or per year. We're gonna to need to read the problem or the question to understand how we allocate the straight line basis. Now the amount reduces the amount of interest paid to get to the interest expense. So assume on January 1, company A issued $100,000, 8% bond, 8% uh, three-year bond for 1021. So remember how we calculate how much we issued it for. We're gonna take the bond price. So in this case, $100,000 and multiply it by 102.1 over 100. And we're gonna get $102,100. So that's how much we receive, but it is a $100,000 bond, so it's worth $100,000. So our carrying value difference here is 2,100. That's gonna be the premium that we're going to amortize over its life. So the bond interest is calculated every six months. So now we're given some time frame, six months. What is the journal entry for the first interest payment on June 30th of this year? So when we think about this, we have a three-year bond. And in this three-year bond, we have six months uh, between each interest payment. So therefore, we are going to uh, pay interest six times because we're gonna pay twice a year. So if it's three years, twice a year, that's six payments. We are going to allocate our bond interest six times over the life of the bond. So don't get confused that these two are the same amount. We're just saying six months. So six months, there's two six months in a year. So two times three is six. So again, just giving you a high level understanding of what we're gonna be calculating. So once we kind of have a good understanding of the data, then we need to start solving it for the journal entry. In order to do the journal entry, we're gonna to need to find the interest that we're gonna pay, the interest expense, and then um, the amortization of the premium 
problem uh, between the difference of the two. So let's get started here. These are the, some of the questions that you should ask yourself. So if number one, what's the premium? Well, we said that the premium was $100,000 times 102.1 over 100 gives us $102,100. But this bond is worth just $100,000. So minus $100,000 and we get $2,100 as the premium. Then we need to amortize the premium calculation. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we've got 2,100 that we're going to have to take care of each and every six months. So how much are we going to amortize every period? So we're going to take 2,100 and divide it by six payments over three years. And we're going to get $350. So every single period, we are going to amortize $350. This is the straight line method. We're taking the 2100 and just dividing it by six periods. So $350. Now, what's the interest payable though? The interest payable is the face value times the uh, stated rate and then allocating that over the interest period. So to calculate the interest payable, we're going to take the bond's face value times its stated interest rate times time. So in this case, we've got $100,000 because that's what its face value is. Multiply that by its stated rate of 8%. And we're going to multiply that by how much time has gone by within one year. Well, six divided by 12 would be our time. Six months over 12, that's going to give us $4,000. So we are going to pay our shareholders $4,000 every six months for borrowing their money. Now, what's the interest expense? Well, we said that the premium is going to reduce our interest expense. Well, what would our interest expense it would be if we didn't have a premium? It would be the $4,000, the interest that we pay. So to calculate the interest expense, we're going to take how much we are paying, $4,000, and we're going to subtract that premium amortization. So in this case, $350. $50. When we do that, we get $3,650. So our interest expense is $3,650. Why is it lower than what we're paying? Because we're subsidizing it basically with the premium that our bondholders paid when we first issued the bond. So we've had this $2,100 sitting here. We're going to slowly pay them back that amount which reduces our interest expense. So now that we have these numbers, we're ready to do the journal entry. So let's do the journal entry. So what do we know? Well, we know we have an interest expense. So interest expense of 3,650. We know that in expense, when it increases, it's a debit. So we're gonna debit interest expense. $3,650. What else do we know? Well, we know that we are paying cash to our shareholders, or sorry, to our bond holders. By paying cash, we are paying them at the stated rate with the face value of $4,000. So we're gonna credit cash in the amount of $4,000. Now we have a difference here in our debits and credits. Our debits need to equal credits. So in this case, we are missing $350. The question is, is where did that $350 go? That $350 goes to the premium on bonds payable. Do you remember where that came from? That came from when we first issued. So when we first issued, we debited cash for, in this case, 102, 100. We credited the bonds payable for 100,000 and then that 2,100 we credited premium on bonds payable. In this case, we are debiting premiums on bonds payable. So we're actually reducing the premiums on bonds payable every single interest payment so that at the end when we're ready to pay back our payable, that premium on bonds payable is zero. So we're going to debit premium on bonds payable, $350. So if we were just doing just a simple T, t account uh, premium on bonds 
payable. We would have credited premium on bonds payable of 2100. This entry would debit at 350. And now we're at 1750. Can't do the math. 1750. So now we have 1750 left. And I bet you if you take five times $350, you're going to get $1,750, which is, we'll zero that out at the very last payment, all right? So that's what that journal entry looks like. Now, let me show you an amortization schedule. So if we were actually gonna do this for the next three years, what would it look like? So this is what it looks like. Now, don't get too scared here, but basically this first payment is what we did here. So we paid 4,000, we amortized 350, and the interest expense was 3,006 sorry, $3,650. In the next payment, we're gonna do the same thing. And because it's straight line, our amortized premium is the same, which means our interest expense is gonna be the same at the end of the day. So notice here, everything is pretty much the same. And the reason why is this amortized uh, premium is on the straight line. A straight line means the same overall period. So that's what the amortization schedule will look like at the very end of every single month. Cash paid 4,000. Uh, reduction of the interest expense by 350 to book an expense of 3,650. Where did that 350 come from? Where did this come from? That came from those bondholders who prepaid us or gave us more money than our bonds was worth. Now, if we were going to look at the carrying value, this is what it would look like. So in that first year or that when we issued the bond, we issued it for $100,000, but we got paid 102,100. So we had this premium of 2,100. Then the entry that we just did reduced the premium on bonds payable by $350. So now we're at $1,750. And the carrying value for a premium is literally the bonds payable plus the premium would get you your carrying value. So 100,000 plus 1,750 is 101,750. And you notice if you look at the premium on bonds payable account, it keeps going down until it gets to zero in that last and final payment. Our carrying value of the loan or bond is now $100,000, which is exactly where we need it to be when we start paying that principal to our bond holder. Older. So again, just a different idea of what this is going to look like, what we were doing, what are we doing at the very end. We're still chomping down that premium on bonds payable until the very end, which we owe nothing and we only owe that principal amount that the bonds are worth based on its face value. So that is a look at the straight line method of bond amortization for interest when it comes to a bond's premium. And I know there's a lot to it. Um, to be very honest, the best way of getting this is just keep on practicing and keep understanding it and doing the calculations full on. Um, just sitting here and watching me talk about doesn't really help. You really got to dig into this so that you can understand the mechanics from the calculation. So hope you enjoy this lesson. In the next lesson, we're actually going to look at the discount version of this and see how it increases the expense rather than decreases it. So until then, we'll see you in the next next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.